Hello, this is Haku the Bean, and today we are going to be reading some r slash entire parent stories. Because I do remember that doing very well all yesterday, or the f a few days ago. So, if you liked this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. And I have noticed that only about 9% of you are, no, 8.2% of you are actually subscribed. So if you really like my content, then please subscribe to Uda channel. Now let's get right into this. <sighs> Top parent put their kid in my car to say hi to my dog. Yesterday, my dog and I were road tripping back from spending Thanksgiving with family. A few hours in, we stopped to stretch legs and get some water. I pulled into a rest stop with plenty of parking. Not very busy. After I let him out to stretch, he was sitting in the back with the windows open while I pulled up directions in the driver's seat. For context, it's an SUV with a three-seater bench in, in the back. I had the Ugg was sitting directly in the middle. Didn't have his head out of the window. All of a sudden, I see a toddler being lifted ed into and through the open back window by their parent to pet my dog. A child's body was 50% into my vehicle's open window. This wasn't a hand next to the window to get him close. I was, I was to get him to come sniff it. The top parent is, is laughing as is the other top parent holding a young, younger baby standing next to the parent that's currently trapped using their toddler into my car. They did not ask or say anything. They just laughed and stuck their toddler into my open window. I was so shocked that out of the gas and just turned around and gave them a confused slash annoyed look. It took at least five solid seconds for them to acknowledge in my reaction for their kid out through the window. Never apologize, just walked away while still laughing. I have a recognizable, friendly, giant breed dog that kids simply want to pet. Luckily, he's, used, he's already used to having to interact with, with parents and young kids. This scenario was just so unsafe to me though. Those parents had no idea if my huge dog is friendly, and put their kid in an un extremely unsafe situation. Let alone the rudeness of just entering someone else's vehicle. In what remote world was this okay to do? I wish I wasn't so shocked and said something. Yeah, intentionally entering someone's vehicle without their permission is really rude. I mean, I've had uh, times where I've accidentally opened the wrong car door. And climbed into someone else's car before I noticed, oh shit, that's the wrong car. Anyway, um, next story. First two so far, pretty short. My mother is controlling my life, and I'm deeply afraid of her. I want to escape so bad. I'm 18 years old, and I've already felt like I was in prison that I'm too scared to get out of. I can't go outside without permission, I can't use social media, and I have to hide everything from her. I'm not allowed to do chores, I'm not allowed to cook, I'm not allowed to fix my own clothes. Things that should be private, I'm not allowed to do on my own. This year I learned how to mop for the first time in my life because I was allowed to have a job after two years of begging. But this is only because it was a job she was okay with. I've never been allowed to do things other kids were able to do. Sleep almost were forbidden. I had to beg and try to guilt trip her into letting me go to my own friend's birthday parties as a child. Last year was the first year I've even been a I've ever been able to stay home alone because of a new job she has. Even then, I still have to go with her to her other job. I have a friend who offered her to me to live with her. I want to live with her. She's in California, but I'm okay with that. However, that a fear is so strong against my mother, I don't think I can do it. I don't know if there's any help I can give to myself. My life is a living nightmare. I just want to have freedom, but the fear is so extreme. It feels like an unobtainable dream. 
Why did I have to be born into this hellhole of a family? Ow. Nephew shoots his cat with Nerf bullets. I don't want to vent all the time to friends or family, so it's probably to do it in a place that was created for venting. That isn't here, this was just for a tell parent stories, but okay. I was at Thanksgiving with my family, and my mom found my nephew's Nerf gun. I'm on the couch watching a, a movie next to her and her boyfriend. And on my left. My cousin is next to me on my right. My, my mom fires the gun, and it shoots so hard it leaves a mark on the wall. Which is probably over 10 feet away. Whoa, that was a strong ass nerf gun. I don't remember them being any more than flimsy little things with soft foam bullets. My cousin says, uh, Bob shoots Germany, uh, Jeremy with that. My mom and her boyfriend laugh as so I struck her. I freeze in horror. Or, he shoots the cat with that? I look at the fucking dark den all my, all, all that my mom just created. My mom plays it off as no big deal, probably because she doesn't want to create tension. Partially because, uh, probably partially because she doesn't have the same level of empathy for animals as she does for people. It was very disturbing. I already know my cousin has ever taken good care of her pets, but to let her two-year-old son literally shoot the cat with these hard bullets is disgusting. In general, my family members are not known for outstanding care of their pets. I mean, he is too, so my hope is that his aim is bad enough that he doesn't hit him. I don't know, I just need to say this somewhere. It really disturbs me, and I don't want to hear anyone defending her if I were to tell someone. I also don't want to burden my friends with stories of animal abuse. No, that's really messed up! What the hell? I live with three cats, and I personally think I'm pretty mean to them. Despite that they're always coming into my room um, and uh, cuddling. Eventually I'll just place them outside my room and just tell them to go away. But I'm not gonna shoot them with a freaking Nerf gun. That's just cruel and pointless. Why would you shoot a cat? Shoot a person instead. They deserve it. Oh dear. We went from short to long, didn't we? Oh gosh, we did. My grandmother is nuts. Hey, I'm writing the I'm writing this mix of asking for advice and needing to vent. I won't be putting actual names in this post, but I do have M, my mom, for the I was gonna say mom, which is a piece mom, 43 female, aunt, my aunt, 40 e e female, uncle, oh, D, I'm just gonna call him Doug, my uncle, 40 male, G, Gutrid, my grunt, none of my 62 female, S, little sister, 12 female. I feel like such an insult saying female so many times. But I guess that's Reddit. I have more er, er, er stories about Gutrid, but this story is one that just happened. <laughs> yes, I'm giving them names. M is Matilda. And A is on. And S is Sam. Why not? I can probably remember those names. This story is this one that just happened. Some backstory. Gertrude made me her guardian about three years ago. I missed school, tests, and did a lot for her. Even did driver's ed when I learned she couldn't drive. She's raised me since before I came into this world, so I do everything I can to pay her back. As of now, I'm in high school doing in theater. A musical theater and working after school. Then every time I get paid, I get groceries for the house. And since then, I've learned to budget and start a meal plan. This weekend was the first week I got paid late. I mean, five days late. So we barely ran out of 
food and says I was broke, can't buy food, yet I asked the school for some food. They agreed and says I forgot to pick it up before going to work, and Matilda was still at work. The school sent someone to pick, drop the food off at my house. Gutrid was the only one home. I have no idea what she said to the guy, but he's, he started to question on if we had food. So she brought him inside the house and to the kitchen and proceeds to show him our fridge and pantry. According to what I was told, Gutra told man we haven't had food for weeks and that me and Matilda had been hiding our money. And overall, negativing her when we don't. That's a weird word. I don't think that's a real word. I get food for at least two weeks, and if I can and take it out for, and if I can, I get takeout for us to eat for dinner. There are times where we run out of food sooner because that Gutrid makes more food uh, uh, than she can eat. There's out leftovers that are at night at old, and throws out food she claimed was bad when it it wasn't. When Matilda got home, Gutrid told her what she did. So Matilda told on what Gutrid just did, and on went to my house and questioned Gutrid why she did that. And accordingly, Gutrid sorry to change her story of how she got the guy into the house and to see the kitchen. I have no idea how long this conversation was or anything since I was at school but close to the end of it. Gutrid then started to say she'll move out and get out of me and Matilda's way. Once it was over, Aunt, Aunt went back to her house with Sam. So then Gutrid doesn't put Sam into a lie that could make things worse for her or something else. I didn't get told what happened to tell Doug and Sam picked me up up today uh, from my after school theater rehearsal. So I decided to stay with Ann and Doug for tonight so I don't have to deal with whatever Gutrid is doing at my house right now. Thank you for reading, and if you have advice for me, I would really appreciate it. Update! Gutrid is moving out and I am no longer her guardian. So to those who advise me to get her checked for dementia and U UTI, I can no longer do that. As far as I know, she's given herself two weeks to move out, and my family did talk more about the idea of her having dementia or UTI. And I wanted to take her, but she's already denied going, and because I'm no longer her guardian, I can't set up an appointment for her to go. Update. I know it's been over a week, but Gutrid had moved out. When I was at my dad's, my mom told me when Gutrid left, and since then we've been finding out she's been lying about everything and even figured out she was mistreating my guinea pigs and my dog. Since she moved out, she's been telling other family that we kicked her out. So far, the other family members we have that live near or close to us are on mine and Matilda's side. No idea when side started, as they learned to never trust her. We have tried calling and texting her since she took her phone and my house keys. Since then, me and Em have been clean. Me and Matilda have been cleaning the house and getting back to family and friends that Gutrid stole or hid away from. Other stuff we found were stuff that belonged to me and Matilda. It was like cleaning up after a hoarder. As we cleaned up, up we found a lot of old pictures, but with on cut out of them. We also found out she threw out her medicine, canceled her appointments for ten days. We didn't know where she was or how she was going. The being only able to learn that she lied to Matilda and me till today about 20 minutes ago. She called Matilda. I was right next to Matilda and she put her phone on speaker so I could hear everything. I was right next to Matilda and, and she put her phone on speaker so I could hear everything. The number wasn't in Gutrid's number. The background had people walking around and talking, and even sounded like a dog was ta was barking in the background. This is how the call all went. Hello, who is this? Gutrich said sign for a little bit. Hello? Hi, it's me. OP cried into Matilda. That's Gutrid. Oh, hey, Mom. Where are you at? I'm at that place you took me. They said my blood was really high and that I need to stay with someone for a while. 
I was wondering if I can stay with you for a while. How long is a while? How long is a while? Oh. As I had to get taken off the lease and I renewed it. Oh, um, never mind. I'm gonna go to the homeless shelter then. Okay. Bye. Gudrun then and hung up, and my, my mom called back the number about 10 minutes later after Gudrun hung up. Came to find out Gudrun has been staying in the psychological unit at my local hospital. No idea what she said to them, but since she called, we figured that she was being released from there. We got told by my, my grandpa, Gudrun's brother, to leave her alone. <laughs> oh, and Gudrun's brothers. I was about to say, damn. What sort of Alabama filming was this? Now, another story. Mom kicked me out. Wow, this is a really short story. Okay. Six months ago, I got out of the hospital for surgery. Bill started stacking in and lost my job. None of my friends checked up on me. And now my mom kicked me out five days ago. I've been living in this shed without her knowledge because I've got no money for gas. My car battery is dead. I literally have $20 to my name and neither her mom or 13 year old sister ha have checked up on me. Literally nowhere else to go. I'm really desperate at the moment. At the moment. And the final story. My parents want to give my sister the earrings my grandma left for me. Parents are going to be a long one. And from these slight mistakes in the title, this might not be worth the read, but let's go ahead and read it anyway. This story is so weird. When I, 27 female, was 20 years old, I was in a relationship with or friends with benefits situation with a guy who's now 40 in male. It was messy. We were on and off for about five years. He was always clear he wasn't ready for a relationship, and I was always clear I was madly in love with him. Every time I got tired of the situation and wanted to leave, somehow he convinced me to stay. Because love is free. We have so much time together. He wasn't ready to commit. It, it meant. I asked advice to my sister, who's now 42F, and she gave me some crappy advice like make him compromise, leave stuff at his place, and basically turn him into a boyfriend until it was too late for him to say no. I never managed to do that because I want him to love me as much as I loved him, not trap him. Yeah, your sister was going for the manipulation bullshit. It seems really unrelated to your grandma's earrings, but go off. During the last night I spent at his place, he said he wanted to try something more serious with me. Talked about some dates he planned, etc. Only to ghost me forever. It was hard. This was the first person I loved, and he treated me like crap. Six months passed, and my sister came home. We both lived with our parents, saying she wanted to introduce her brand new boyfriend. She had a, uh, had a ton of boyfriends, but she said this one is the one. It was a dinner only with my parents at our home, so I was excluded and expected to just go out or chill in my room. The day came, and while they were dining, I ordered a pizza. I came downstairs to only find a guy I was with six months prior, dining with my parents and sister. I was shocked, but paid for my pizza and went to my room again to cry. After dinner, I was confronted at uh, my sister in front of our parents and begged her not to not be with them. To be loyal to me, her loyal sister. There was no way she didn't know who he was. I had shown her pictures of him, his social media, where he worked, and she even knew where he lived. They never met because he didn't, didn't want to meet my family and never introduced his. But she knew who he was and excluded me from the dinner because she knew. 
She said they met by chance after we stopped think, seeing each other. She knew how hard that rupture was. She knew how painful it was as to not I'd, I'd even have a closure. He just stopped replying, not even blocking me, just left me there wondering after five years. She knew that during those six months, I was still hurting. I, n I know how it was my fault. I was high and naive and thought if I stayed long enough, he would be ready for a relationship. I won and would learn to love me. Stupid, I know. She defended herself, saying it was a coincidence and chemistry was there. She loved him and wasn't going to lose the love of her life. That person literally broke your sister's heart. If you're there for commitment, you're going to have to introduce her, your a partner to your family. At some point in time, it's going to happen. And while it isn't your family's business who you date, it's kind of a, sh a crappy thing to do if you're still in contact with your family to date someone that literally broke your family's heart. But, go off. This stuff only happens once in a lifetime. No, it doesn't. When I was in my early 20s, I would believe that. However, now I know that there are 8 billion people in the, this world. How did you not know that in your early 20s? Whatever. There's no one love of your life. You can find the love of your life multiple times if you look for it. My parents died with her and said I should get over it since we never had a real relationship. That's fucking rude and weird. One and a half years had passed. I had been excluded from multiple family gatherings because he would be around, and my family thinks I offering negative vibes since I'm so bitter about everything. I have no feelings for him, but I feel betrayed by my sister and my parents. He's just a piece of crap in my eyes now. My sister is now six months pregnant. Due to her age, she had been extremely pampered by my parents. She still lives at home and is going to move with him maybe two months after the baby is born. Then they're going to marry. In my culture, it's normal to have a woman gives birth, moves back or stay with her mom so the mom will help with the baby for the first few months. A week ago, my sister's friend made a surprise baby shower. I happened to be at home. I tried to talk to them. I don't know why. Maybe because my sister and I were close, were too close before, and I'm sad we're no longer friends. But her friends acted like I wasn't there. Only replied to me with "hmm," "yes," "no," or silence, as if I was the one that created this mess, or I was a homewrecker, or I tried to seduce my sister's man. I was planning to move already. I was saving money and stuff. But after that, I left immediately to a friend's house. I'm in the process to find my own place. Two days ago, I received a call from my parents asking me to have a talk. I went to their house and they informed me that, that the diamond earrings my grandma left me will be given to my sisters. Those earrings have been in my family for four generations, and before my grandma died, she said the earrings will be mine, and my sister will receive a gold necklace. Grandma trusted my parents with the earrings. There was no will or anything, she just asked them to give it to me when I was mature enough to appreciate or take care of a family heirloom. Now, my parents... I think since my sister is getting married first and is having grandma's first grandchild, but my sister should have it. I'm really mad now. They're robbing me of something my grandmother left to me. Yeah, that's pretty messed up. Messed up. I'm not gonna lie, that's really messed up. 
I don't think my parents are evil evil. I think they were worried that my sister wouldn't marry due to her age. Again, in my culture, a single woman in her 40s is something to worry for her family. Seems like a really weird misogynistic culture, but go off. And now that she's forming a family, they want to reward her with everything. But I was the closest to my grandma. She made clear the earrings will be mine, not my sister's. Not for her to marry or have a child, but mine. After two years of being excluded in favor of my sisters, I gave the ultimate aim to my parents. They gave me the earrings to me as my grandma intended, or I will cut them from my life forever. Not gonna lie, the idea of cutting my family off is too painful, but I fear that all they already made me and still make me is so wrong, I don't want them in my life anymore. I don't really get that. I feel a little shallow fighting over this, but those are the only things my grand and dad left F2. They are not entitled to them. That was really hard to read. I should probably do more um, checking of that sort of thing. Anyway, that was <laughs> long stories with really bad grammar that I was expected to be edited. Had to be, you know readable. I kind of missed out on like half of what happened, but it looks like some weird stuff happened. Anyway, that was the Tower of Parents. If you liked this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!